praise God for his goodness and mercy, for opening the ears and the hearts of people in the name of Jesus. We tear off the veil of the enemy and let the voice of the Holy Spirit go forth, not the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the airwaves now and I silence every contrary tongue in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A lot of you came here today because there's something that you're dealing with. And God will meet you at the point of your need. Most of the time when you tell Christians that they need deliverance, they look at you like, what do you mean? And sometimes if we don't recognize the need to be cleaned out, the need for stuff to be broken off our lives, we never achieve the goal and the purpose of God for our lives. Like I've I said this many times, if the devil cannot stop you from being saved, he can stop you from understanding the true inheritance of being a child of God. If the devil cannot stop you from being saved, he can stop you from moving forward in Christ Jesus. He can stop you, he can get all other things all wrapped up in your life and then you can't move forward. The Bible says that my people perish from a lack of knowledge. Because of lack of knowledge, a lot of people have gone into captivity. If you turn to Isaiah 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men have famished, their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth with that measure. Their glory, their multitude, their pomp, and they that rejoice it shall descend into it. The Bible says in Obadiah 17, that upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. There shall be what? Deliverance, there shall be holiness, then you will possess your possessions. There are a lot of people that are not living in their possessions, not living in the true blessing of God for their lives because number one, they've not been through deliverance. And because they've not been through deliverance, they cannot live a life of holiness. And when they cannot live a life of holiness, they cannot possess their possessions. And if you've not been through deliverance because you don't understand why you need deliverance, most people, the reason why they can't live holy is because they've not been through deliverance. There are people that are being trapped with witchcraft that is influencing their behavior. There are people that are being trapped with sexual demons that are influencing their behavior and making them do perversion and all kinds of things that make them end up in hell. Amen? Amen. So, that is why the word of God says, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall do what? Possess their possession. So there are many things that people don't recognize. In the, the body of Christ... A lot of people will be giving all these crazy arguments. Oh no, a Christian cannot have a demon. And you're sitting there, the devil is harassing you and they're telling you in church that no, you're a Christian, you cannot have a demon. How many people have heard that? In church, a, de- a Christian cannot be demon possessed. You're sitting there, the devil is chasing you, the devil is harassing your life and they're telling you that you cannot have a demon because you're a Christian. You're going to the pastor and saying, things are walking around in my house. Things are... You know, things are, horrible things are happening to me and they are telling you, oh, no, it's just in your mind. In fact, they'll look at you crazy. Because, number one, we don't understand what deliverance means. Deliverance is a lot deeper than just somebody casting a demon out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is deliverance? First of all, I'm going to give you ten facts about deliverance. Number one, yes, it is possible for you to be saved and still need deliverance. If you go in the Bible, the book of Acts 8, there was a story about Simon the sorcerer who got saved. Acts 8 verse 9 says, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the city of Samaria, used sorcery to bewitch the people. Amen? And they said in verse 12, that but when Philip started preaching concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also and was baptized. What did they mean? That means Simon got saved, right? Good. Now, if you go down in verse 20, when the apostles heard that Samaria had received the gospel, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. Philip was an evangelist. Peter and John were apostles. So they needed an apostolic anointing to provoke that demon out of Simon. That is why you could be sitting in church 
And people are preaching because they don't have any fire. It doesn't provoke anything out of you. But when you sit under an apostolic anointing, when you come under the fire of God, it will provoke that thing out of you. Simon was a sorcerer, saved but still a witch. Until John and Peter came. And he provoked that witchcraft out of him. He now wanted to buy the gospel. Then Peter said unto him, your money perish with you because you are, you are, God that has taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You are neither part or lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness. If perhaps the Lord might forgive you, I perceive that you're full of the gall of bitterness and you're under the bondage of iniquity. So Simon was saved, but still in bondage. Hallelujah. There are a lot of people that are saved, but still in bondage. Jesus Christ spoke to uh, Lazarus. Come forth. Lazarus came forth with grave clothes. Round his head, round his legs, round everything. And when Lazarus came forth, they had to say, loose him and let him go. So when the coming forth is life, but life more abundantly is being loosed and let go. Because if you don't get loose, you cannot live abundant life. Another fact about deliverance, yokes are not easy. They are uncomfortable. They are problems. And if you keep the yoke of the enemy over your life, it will harass your life. Curses, evil covenants, and strongholds do exist. Captivity does exist. That is why sometimes you can see somebody doing so good, but they'll turn around and do the craziest thing, and you're wondering, how can somebody with this bright, somebody this sensible, somebody this nice, turn around and act so crazy? People have said it. We lost our mind and shot everybody in the school because the devil spoke to us. Chains and bondages will remain in place until you do something about it. When you get saved, it doesn't automatically break your chains. You have to take the blood, apply it to your situation to break those chains. The chains and bondages and curses will remain in place until they are addressed. Most of the bondages that we're carrying does not originally belong to us. Many of the bondages that we're carrying were inherited. Many of the bondages that are in our life, sometimes we ignorantly walked into them. Many of the bondages that have come into our life have been programmed by our behavior that is programmed by our foundation. Your grandfather used to beat his wife. The spirit is upon you and you beat your wife. Your grandfather was a polygamist. Right now you're married and you can't stop chasing women because your great-grandfather was a polygamist. Now, the, your own sin and iniquity is the iniquity and the sin of your forefathers. Your grandmother was a witch. Now, you're safe. You always go to end up in churches which are not clean. Why? Because there's something in your foundation programming you to go to kind of churches. A high, number seven, a high level of ignorance determines and makes the enemy to get ground over us and pray over us. What makes the enemy to keep his hand, his lock over us? It's ignorance. Your greatest mountain is the mountain of your ignorance. Another fact, the victory that you gain, the victory that you gain in the battles in your life will determine your progress in life. If you don't fight some battles and win, you will not progress. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your victory is determined by what? Your, your progress is determined upon the victory. And the victory is dependent on how badly you want your battles to be won. Hallelujah. The way you address your battle would determine the length of time it will stay in your life. I know in America we like to send prayer requests. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Nobody can pray you through your problems. You're the only one that can pray yourself through your problems. If you get used to calling the pastor, the night you get up and the witch is pressing your neck and there's no pastor to call, you're in trouble. And sometimes the pastors and the people that were calling, they are not even clean. They don't have power. They don't have fire. You're sending prayer requests all over the world, sometimes sending them to witchcraft covens because you can never learn to pray for yourself. The level of your bondage and the length of your time that your bondage remains is determined by what you do about it. So no problem. Send prayer requests. 
Can they pray for me? Somebody pray for me. You'll be calling your enemy to pray for you. You've given them spiritual authority to deal with you. Sometimes some people will say, Dr. Stella, I'm praying for you. I say, no, don't pray for me. Because so, don't give people spiritual authority over your life. Uh, All that pray for me, pray for uh, me, we keep sending around is giving uh, people legal spiritual authority to deal with us. Hallelujah. The enemy in our life is never ready to give up. The only language he understands is violence. The devil does not understand, I beseech thee, please let me go. If you let me go, I will never talk to anybody about Jesus. If you let me go right now, I promise you I will not pray those bad prayers again. The devil does not understand, please. And he will continue to steal. He will continue to push. He will continue to harass you. He does not stop. He does not relent. He keeps doing it until he can put you in bondage and ultimately take you to hell. If the devil can keep your mind in captivity, then you can stay living in sin. And he has programmed the spirit of death and hell in your life. Facts about deliverance. Facts about the battle in our lives. So what is deliverance? Deliverance is to set loose or get free from evil attachment or bondages in your life. Deliverance is to break curses, evil covenants, backwardness, stagnancy, failure, and sickness. There are many people that the sickness in your life, it needs deliverance. It doesn't need doctors. When a young lady came here, sitting right there, when we started praying, she vomited blood, vomited blood. She had been diagnosed with cyst, evil cyst, fibroid, endometriosis, all kinds of stuff. When she left and went back home, she started producing blood clots. Went to the doctor. They, they examined her. Cyst, fibroid, everything gone. We had dealt with the deposit of the spirit husband. Where a lady called me, she was hitting the floor. Dr. Stella, I am laying on the floor and the world is spinning. I don't know where this vertigo came from, but the world is spinning. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you foul spirit. Take your hands off her in Jesus' name. And the Lord backed my word. Took hands of the woman. He called me two months later, Dr. Stella. Not had that vertigo again ever. That could have ended up being medication, medication, medication. Drugging what? A demon. Deliverance is to remove invisible load that has been placed upon our head. Invisible hindrances. Sometimes you're going around and you're heavy. Your spirit is heavy. Your life is heavy. You don't know what is going on with you, but you know that stuff just feel right. If God could open our eyes in the spirit. I went to minister in this church. Big church. 5,000 members. After I finished ministration, it was powerful. The power of God moved. A week later, I had a dream about the church. It's like I saw people walking to the altar, dancing, serving. They were loving. They were dancing. I could see Christians. They were just dancing to go and give their offering. You could see the love of God in them. You could see them just dancing with love for the Lord. You could know that these people are God's children. But you looked at them. Some had big black clouds on their head. Some had snakes around their waist. Some had big stuff put upon them. Some had all kinds of things. Some had chains tying their legs. Some had chains. Some had dogs dragging them. All kinds of crazy stuff was upon the people. And they danced to the altar with love. I started crying as they danced away from the altar with the same bondage. They danced away from the altar with the same snakes, with the same big back clouds, with the same ropes around their legs. How many of you have danced to the altar? Serve God, worship, dance, walk out of there with the same bondage. Maybe that headache you keep having is a big black cloud on your head. Maybe the reason why you cannot make money is because your hands are chained. Maybe the reason why you cannot get married is because there's a spirit husband tied around your waist. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they danced away. And that is the story of the church. People dancing to the altar. Dancing to the presence of God. Dancing to the altar. Shut up in the name of Jesus. Shut up. In the name of Jesus. Quick making noise. Shut up. You know, distract this, this place. People dancing to the altar and dancing out with the same bondage. 
Hallelujah. So there are times there are all these invisible loads and hindrances in our lives. And we need deliverance to break them out. Hallelujah. Say, oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Deliver me this weekend. Deliver me this weekend. In the name of Jesus. Come and pray, pray, pray. Oh God, arise. 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 Deliver me this weekend. Deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me this weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Deliverance is disgracing the strong man in charge of your case. Jesus said that how else can you enter into a strong man's house and, and spoil his goods without binding the strong man? The strong man is the person that is the captain of the devil's army. The strong man is the prison warden of the devil that stands in front of there and says you cannot go free. That stands there and says you cannot have your blessing. That The person in charge of the satanic warehouse that has all your goods. Deliverance is disgracing that strong man and possessing your possessions. Hallelujah. The word of God says that upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob will do what? Possess their possessions. A lot of us have not possessed our possessions because they are in the camp of the enemy. We're praying every day. Oh God, give me this. God, give me this. The Bible says God has given us everything. Everything pertaining to life and godliness. The day Jesus got, died, he gave us everything. The day you got saved, you got everything. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if us, his children, are not seeing our inheritance, it's not in the heaven. It's not in, in heaven. It is in the strong room of the enemy. And he takes it and gives it to his people. That's why all these rock stars worshipping the devil, getting money. The devil can't produce. So whose stuff is it? It's our stuff. Deliverance is going into that strong room. Disgracing the strong man. And possessing your possessions. Deliverance is to fulfill what God wants you to fulfill. To become who God wants you to be. There are many times a lot of us have prayed. We've seen what was supposed to be. But we've not become it. Deliverance is to fight. Until you achieve your God given destiny. Deliverance is to be released from witchcraft torment. There are a lot of people in church calling us doctors. Tell us witches are tormenting me. They say witch walking witchcraft against me. And I'm like you're a Christian. Why is the local witch tormenting you? Why is a low class local witch able to touch the children of God? It's because we don't have fire. We don't have knowledge. We don't understand our authority in Christ Jesus. Deliverance is to be released from witchcraft torment. Deliverance is to close doors of affliction and open doors to provision. Close those doors that make you not go through the same cycle. The same cycle. Cycle of failure. Cycle of bad luck. Cycle of bad stuff happening to you. Close those doors and open the door to God's provision and blessing. Deliverance is to destroy the evil platform that was prepared for you by your forefathers. The evil platform we inherited that we didn't know. Deliverance is to break the yoke of poverty. Deliverance is to crush collective captivity. Collective captivity is when you see in your family, everybody has the same bondage. You look through all your brothers and sisters, and they don't get married, they don't get money, they don't move forward, or they are on drugs. You go into your family meeting, you look in the family meeting, everybody's been in jail. Everybody's been divorced four times. The children all get pregnant at 16. If you start seeing an evil pattern in your family, you know that it's foundational. Deliverance is to break from that collective captivity so that your story will be different, even in your family. Deliverance is to pull down evil altars, altars that have been formed from generations, altars that are even in the city. The Bible says sometimes when wicked men have done wickedness in the city, the city becomes a cauldron. And if you live in that city, if you cannot pull down the altars of darkness and place yourself at a different level, the bondage over that area will affect you. Deliverance sometimes is to just deal with the wicked covens in your environment. Deliverance is breaking the curses of life, possessing your possessions, disgracing the power of satanic delay. The power of satanic delay is like you come to the edge of your breakthrough, but something happens. How many people have been there? You find out that you walk, you struggle, you struggle, you come to the edge of your breakthrough, something happens, and all of a sudden you're back to square one. Deliverance is disgracing the power of satanic delay in marriage. 
in your job, in your health, in prosperity, in your family, in your walk with God. Hallelujah. Deliverance is killing destructive dreams. Deliverance is getting to the place where you knock off some of these chips that are upon you that make these powers be chasing you in the dream. Oh, I had a dream. This person be child be running and running and running. By the time you go through deliverance and gather fire, powers will not be chasing you in the dream. You will be chasing them. Amen. Deliverance is for your sins to be washed away. Deliverance is coming out of iniquity. There are some people that until you go to deliverance, you cannot stop sinning. There are people that sin is in their members. Paul said, when I want to do right, something inside of me is dragging me to do wrong. Who would deliver? Who would deliver this body of death? Paul cried out for deliverance because he knew that there was something in his members that was making him want to do wrong when he knew that he should be doing right. And that is the spirit of death and hell because if you can keep sinning, you're on your way to hell. I don't care whether you're a bishop. The Bible says that he that is born of God does not continue to live in sin. So if you're still living in sin, instead of you praying, oh God, help, oh God, let your fire increase, you're still dealing with small little stealing and little lying and little fornication and you're a bishop and you're still wanting to watch pornography, you're not saved. Deliverance is arresting bad luck. When some you start feeling like it only rains on you. You see other people progressing. But when it comes to you, something happens. Deliverance is waking up your inner fire. Let me tell you one of the biggest testimonies we get from our deliverance program is waking up of people's inner fire. Because when you get out of here, it shakes something inside of you. And you go and you start serving God more. I remember there was a time when I got saved and I was like, this salvation thing is not working for me. They told me you can't fornicate and I didn't get it. They told me you can't do this. I was like, I didn't get it. I was like, what's your problem? I took my boyfriend to church. I wasn't saved. Until I went to Houston and met this man of God that carried the gospel of power. I'm not talking about all this herbalistic, herbalistical. People that carry what you call the gospel of power. People that will speak upon your life and yokes will break off your mind. This man prayed for me. I threw up and threw up and threw up. And when I came out of that man's place, I was a changed person. The fire of God got ignited from inside of me. I could see clearly. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like the, the veil had been taken off my face. Before that, they talked and talked about, oh, don't do this, don't do that. I, I, I didn't get it. There are many people sitting in church not saved because the power of God to truly snatch them out of the kingdom of darkness is not in the body of Christ. It's not in the church. Deliverance is carrying that anointing that when you meet people and you speak a word into their life, you preach to them, you talk to them, it snatches them out of the kingdom of darkness. They leave you near you. They don't want to fornicate anymore. They don't want to go out and sin anymore. They want to serve God. The fire of God starts burning inside of them. Oh, that the power of God should come back into the church. Because there are people going into church hurting. Coming out of there hurting. And they have to come back every Sunday. Every Wednesday. So that they can talk them into feeling better. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. God is doing Oh, You're going to the top. You're going to the top. You're spinning. Oh, spin around three times. Run. Five high fives. You're going to the top. How can you go to the top when your leg has been amputated with sin? How are you going to run when your leg has been cut with fornication? How are you going to run when pride or forgiveness cannot let you keep your blessing? Deliverance is being delivered from sin. Deliverance is getting to that stage where you don't sin deliberately. The Bible says if you continue to sin deliberately after you know the truth, there's no more forgiveness for you. When I read that scripture, it bothered me. I said, Lord, what do you mean? That if I repent, you won't forgive me? There will no more be forgiveness. You know why? Because as you continue to sin and God continues to talk to you and you don't listen, after a while, God takes off the convicting power of you. And when that convicting power leaves you, God has given up on you. You cannot repent. Do you understand? There are many people in the church that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost has left them. They can't get saved. 
Because it takes that convicting power for you to get saved. But when God keeps telling you, don't lie, you keep doing it. Don't sin, you keep doing it. Don't fornicate, you keep doing it. Don't do this. Don't be collecting money from the children of God. That is you, so you keep doing it. After a while, God will lift his hand off you. That is why you see preachers preaching the most heretic things and believing it. Why? Because the convicting power of God has left them. They cannot be saved. The Bible says when you have received this gospel and you fall away, it is impossible to bring you back. So there are a lot of these people. So you'll be wondering, how can a man of God reading the Bible tell you that homosexuality is okay? It is because the thing that tells them wrong and right has lifted off them. And hey, God is the one boss that will fire you and you keep working. Ask Saul. Fired Saul two years into his kingship. He stayed king of Israel for 38 years. Fired. Anointing lifted off him. They've already anointed David. New king in place. He continued working. Hey, I don't want to ever be fired and I don't know it. I don't want to get to the stage where the convicting power of God will lift off me and I'm doomed. Because when it lifts off you, you're doomed. That's why the Bible is saying in Hebrews 10.26 that if you continue to sin deliberately, after you've known the truth, there's no more forgiveness for you. Because the thing that will make you run into the mercy seat will lift off you. And you will become reprobate. That means somebody that sins and does not feel guilty. Somebody that sins knows it's wrong but do it anyway. Knowing that this is right poison, this is cyanide, and you drink it anyway. God will help us. Somebody say, God help me. me. Deliverance is disgracing the power of witch doctors, root workers, psychics, all those things that a lot of us have dabbled into. People that have checked their horoscopes, people that have played with eight ball, the devil has packaged himself in so many beautiful ways. Harry Potter, the people, you understand, say, I can bet every one of you he has dabbled into witchcraft. If you didn't do Harry Potter, you play with the eight ball. If you didn't play with the eight ball, you, you did Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary with the whatever, they, what they call it, Bloody Mary in the mirror. People that have been listening to demonic music, when Beyonce is singing with Sasha Fierce and you're dancing to it, all of us that dance to Michael Jackson, Thriller, he had demons dancing and we all dance to it. Deliverance is disgracing the witchcraft that has come into your life. Deliverance is power over untimely death. Knowing that you would die when God meant for you to die, not before. I'm not afraid to die. But the devil is not going to cut my life short either. Hallelujah. The Bible says we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Because we love not our lives unto death. I am not afraid to die. But I know that the devil is not taking me out until God says it's my time to go. Deliverance is killing affliction from the root. You find yourself going through the same affliction. Sometimes you, re- you start thinking that you meet the same people. You move cities and you still meet the same kind of people. Deliverance is disgracing career and business failure. You start, you go to school, you do this, you cut it halfway, you do this, you cut it halfway, you do this, you, do you finish this degree, finish that degree, you have two, three degrees, you still don't have a job. You need deliverance. You understand what I'm saying? You're bright, you're smart, but you go to school and some crazy happen you dropped out. You need deliverance. You see children, they will get out of college, they get picked into the NBA, they sign their first contract, they go out and something knocks them out and they die because something in their foundation says, no, no, this family can never make it. Or they'll go and sleep with some hoochie and they end up getting totally disgraced. They need deliverance. Deliverance is dealing with marine powers, powers of the water. The word of God talks about in the Revelation, the woman that sits on many waters, that has his fingers. The many waters are peoples, nations, counties, people. The many waters is the different human beings. The marine kingdom has its finger in everybody's business. Deliverance is dealing with the water kingdom. A lot of people don't even know what the marine kingdom is. And that is what controls the world. Deliverance is breaking evil, conscious or unconscious associations. There are some people in your life that the devil put them there in your life to lead you to the wrong place. Deliverance is being able to recognize who is an agent in your life. How many of you have been there? You were 15, 16, heading somewhere right and this person came into your life and totally derailed it. Most times it's a woman, 
or a man. It's always like the opposite sex. They come to your life and then you don't know what you find out that you slept with somebody and your life was never the same. It derailed your whole future. Your whole thought life. It's like the devil programmed an agent into your life at an age that will totally turn you the other way. Deliverance is destroying the satanic embargo or padlock. There are people's lives that have been locked up. Business, locked up. You know what I'm saying? Favor, locked up. You feel like you, you, you understand? Do you go, so you feel like, you feel like favor has escaped you. You know that you're, you're well qualified for this. But it's like something blocks it from ever coming to you. Deliverance is destroying those satanic embargoes and padlock. Somebody say every padlock of darkness darkness. in my life life. break by fire, break Break by thunder in the name of Jesus. Every padlock of darkness in my life, in my family, break, 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 break the padlock, break the padlock, break the padlock, break the padlock. In Jesus' name we pray. Deliverance is being released from the powers of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness. Breaking out from the kingdom of darkness and truly becoming a child of light. Deliverance is spiritually cleaning your environment, your house, your job, where you go, where you stay. When I enter a hotel room, I clean the environment. Deliverance is uprooting evil seeds from your destiny. Things that the enemy has planted. Sometimes the enemy will plant things into your life that will grow mature at a particular time in your life. At the time that you start college, you develop this migraine headache. Do you understand? At the time that you get to a stage where you want to get married, all of a sudden you have a fibroid. That means there are things that were planted in your life. They didn't bother you until you get to... Particular points where you need a breakthrough, then they show up. Deliverance is breaking free from evil habits. Talkativeness, lying, anger, shouting, all kinds of stuff. Sometimes God will put good people into your life, but anger, unforgiveness, pride, will make the gossiping, will make those people run away from you. Deliverance is breaking those evil habits. Deliverance is being set free from sickness, infirmity, that defy medical diagnosis. Deliverance is cutting off the evil trend. There are these evil trends that are coming down from your family line that they don't cross into you and they don't go down your generation. Deliverance is allowing the divine circumcision of your heart. Allowing God to marinate your heart and take out the heart of stone that still wants to hang with the devil and give you a heart of flesh that wants God, that chases God with everything. Deliverance is vomiting every evil food that you've consumed in the table of the enemy. All of us that have eaten food sacrificed to idols. You go to Chinese restaurant. They have their gods. Oh, you go in there, you gobble it. You, you get out of there feeling tired. You sleep in the dream, they feed you. Every time before you cover your eyes, they're feeding you, feeding you. You wake up from sleep and you cannot stand. You cannot pray. Why? Because they fed you an evil deposit. They feed you in the dream. The next time they come and take you on a journey. Why? Because they gave you witchcraft in the dream and you took it. Deliverance is exhuming your buried blessings. Sometimes you need to go down 10 generations to pull your stuff out. Deliverance is rendering diviners mad. People that are sitting down chanting and divining over you. Sending you back to them until it knocks them apart. Deliverance is being set free from contamination using only the name of Jesus. Somebody called on the prayer line and was like, well, that somebody in their family was going to do something to cleanse them. Or all these spiritual baths. All that stuff is demonic. They will take one affliction and put ten. Deliverance is getting clean using the blood and the name of Jesus. Deliverance is binding the enemy and losing yourself from captivity. Deliverance is freedom from idolatry and occultic practices. Some people are still attracted to the occult. You still want to watch demonic movies. There's something inside of you that needs to come out. Some of you, you know, you're a Christian, but something inside you still wants you to go to this Christian cause, Jehovah Witness, uh, Baha'i, or, or go try another religion, or you're a Christian, but you're doing, or you go to Pilates, or you're a Christian and a Mason, you're a Christian and Eastern star. There's something inside of you that does not recognize that what you are in is demonic. Usually it's from your foundation. You're sitting in church. Your pastor, your bishop is a mason. And you're still sitting there. Oh, I love bishop. You need deliverance. Because there's something inside of you that should know that if your pastor is a mason, that church that you're sitting in is a coven. 
They have their sign upon your church. Deliverance is recognizing that you are in a coven. And as long as you stay in that coven, the devil will steal and kill and destroy your life. Deliverance is pursuing your stubborn pursuers. David said, I will pursue my enemy, overtake them, and I will not stop until they are consumed. I wrote a book here that says Sustain Fire. Every one of you need that book. Sustain fire. That means you fight. You fight. You fight until you truly occupy your portion God has for you. Deliverance is deciding that I am not going to stop until I occupy my portion in this world. Deliverance is becoming successful over your battles. Deliverance is sending every evil arrow back to sender. People are like, no, pray for your enemies. Really? My enemies? No, I don't pray for my enemies. I'm not talking about regular human beings that are, all, that are just in bondage and jacked up. You understand what I'm saying? Where if you, a human being, goes and invoke the devil and get witchcraft and try it on my life, when I send it back, it's with a hundredfold destruction. Amen. Do you understand? I don't play. You know, I went to minister in Turks and Caucasus. And I walk in there, the place is tight. The Lord has showed me, even in the afternoon before I went, that these powers had come out of the water to try me because I spoke over the radio. When I walked into the room, witches were sitting there. The place was like, Grr. we started praying. And then I stopped at some point. I said, guys, I said, listen, if you are an agent of darkness in this place, the next prayer point that we're about to pray, if you know, that you came here to hinder this place. If you know that you're serving the devil or there's somebody in this place that you are afflicting, it's time for you to leave. Because the next prayer that we're going to pray will deal with you. When we open prayer, people left. I was like, every agent of darkness inside in this environment, here to stop my deliverance, catch fire, burn to ashes. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, burn to ashes. Deliverance is speaking destruction to your mountains. The Bible says if you speak to every mountain, it will move. Speaking destruction until you see your mountains come down. Deliverance is crossing your Jordan River on the mantle of power. When God parts your Jordan, you go past. Deliverance is disgracing the counsel of the ungodly in your life. People that give you ungodly counsel. Deliverance is having the last laugh over your enemies. They said, you will not do this. But you say, hey, hey, look at me now. You said I will not get saved. Hello, look at me now. You thought I could not serve God. But look at me now. You used to chase me all the time. Harass me. I will be praying and crying. But today, I am God's battle axe. That's deliverance. You preach and the devil will harass you. You preach, the devil will harass you. At some point, you fight and you fight and you fight until God gives you authority. You fight until you get to a stage where God starts backing up your word. You become a voice. The Lord backs up. You become God's battle act. You become a sharp threshing instrument in the hands of the Lord. You, that God can use you to thresh the nations, to thresh kingdoms. You get to a place where you say move and the devil comes and the angels of the living God will show up and say, did you hear my daughter? Did you hear my son? Did you hear the child of God say move? Amen. Deliverance is being able to use the blood of Jesus as a weapon to put your enemies under siege. Deliverance is causing the power of every evil charm around you, around the people you are around, to be nullified. Deliverance is unseating the powers that are sitting on your promotion. Ministerial, financial, marital, in every way. Deliverance is breaking every evil dedication, form knowingly or unknowingly in your life. Deliverance is being released from every spirit husband and spirit wife that is harassing you, stopping you from getting married, stopping your destiny from moving forward. Deliverance is being released from oppression, obsession, and possession. Hallelujah. Who needs deliverance? Everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody needs deliverance. If you get saved, your next thing is deliverance. If you get saved and you don't go through deliverance, it is hard for you to move forward and truly be God God has called you to be. The reason why a lot of children of God are still going around in circles is because of lack of deliverance. Hallelujah. So when you understand why you need deliverance, you will run so that you can get your deliverance. Hallelujah. 
Deliver us is for that veil to be taken off your face so you can truly become a child of the kingdom. Amen. Come on, rise up on your feet. If you are in this place and you've not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or you're listening to us and you've not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come, into my life. come into my life. Be my Lord, Be my Lord. and my personal Savior. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come into my life, into my life. And, teach and teach me how to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray three prayer points. Amen. We're going to pray them with fire. We're going to pray them with power. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know that God is going to arise and fight our battles for us. Amen. I want you to sing. Come by fire, come by sword, come by fire, come by sword, come by fire, come by sword, fight my battles for me, hallelujah. Come by fire, come by sword, come by fire, come by sword, come by fire, come by sword, fight my battles for me, hallelujah. Come by fire, come by fire, Jesus. You are the consuming fire. Come by sword. Fight my battles for me. Hallelujah. Fight my battles for me. Hallelujah. Fight my battles for me. Holy Spirit. Fight my battles for me. Holy Spirit. Fight my battles for me. Hallelujah. Fight my battles for me. Hallelujah. Fight my battles for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say any power, any power, any spirit, any, spirit, any, personality, any personality inside of me, inside of me resisting, God, resisting God, come out and die, come out and die in, the in the name of Jesus. Come and pray, 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 pray. Every power, every spirit, every personality inside of me resisting God. Come out and die, 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 come out and die. salvation. Making you want to live in sin. Every power of sin and iniquity inside of you. Resisting your salvation. Every spirit of death and hell. That wants you to end up in hell. Now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Begin to cough it out. Bump it out. Vomit it. Raka shakanda rabo sata. Roko shakara brasata. Reke shakanda rabo sata. You are a stranger. You are a stranger. You are a stranger. Begin to submit and come out now. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Begin to chase it. Begin to burn that veil of their minds. Begin to burn the veil. Begin to burn the veil right now in the name of Jesus. Every veil of darkness over your mind, over your soul, in the name of Jesus. Let it burn. Let it burn right now. In Jesus' name we pray. One of the biggest things that we have to deal with as Christians is a mental idolatry. We've been trained to feel good about ourselves. We've been trained not to take responsibility for our actions. It's always somebody else's fault. We've been trained to build up a king and a queen inside of us. And that king has exalted itself even above God. We're going to deal with that queen. That king. That personality. That we have programmed inside of us. That will not let us truly serve God. The word of God said God resists the proud. We are trained in this country to be proud. To be arrogant. Because of that God cannot answer our prayers. 
We have this self-serving behavior. I've been living holy for three months. Where's my blessing? Where's my breakthrough? Oh, because I managed to get saved and I'm preaching. God owes me something. At the same time, you're still living in pride, unforgiveness, and all kinds of jacked up foolishness. I have accepted the lie of the devil. The Bible says we should be nothing so that God can be something in us. Amen. Today, we're going to deal with that idol. I want you to pray. Say, any evil king, any evil queen, any evil queen. Any evil queen. For men say prince. For women say princess. Say any evil king. Any evil queen. Any evil princess. Inside of me. Come out and die. Come out and die. In the name of Jesus. Any evil king. Any evil queen. Any evil princess. Inside of me. Come out. 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 Come out and die. Come out and die. television, programmed by books, programmed by movies, programmed by all the things that we've been listening and being trained. That is not according to the power of God. According to the word of God. Let it begin to come out right now. This country has programmed us that the woman is in charge. If mama ain't happy, nobody is happy. The devil is a liar. Amen. The woman is not in charge. The man is. Amen. The devil has programmed us to receive all kinds of foolishness so that we can destroy our homes. So that God cannot use us because we're prideful. That spirit of pride, that mental idol, that Leviathan spirit begin to come out right now. Burp it out. Yawn it out. Cough it out. Burp it out. Yawn it out. That Leviathan. Yawn it out. Cough it out. Burp it out of you right now. Burp it out. Vomit it. Yawn it out. That idol has to go. That God has to go. That God inside of you. It gotta go. One way to the pit. Now, there is a new God in town. His name is Jehovah. There is a new God in town. There's a new God exalted in your life. His name is Jehovah. He's the king of kings. He's a lion from the tribe of Judah. He is Jesus. He's the son of the living God. He's a lion from Judah. Every other God. Now, begin to come out. When the greater power comes, as a matter of necessity, every lesser power must bow. Every lesser power programmed into your mind. Now, bow. Bow. Bow in the name of Jesus. The idols from your father's house that have said that you will not get saved. You will not comprehend salvation. That will program you to continue to sin so that you can end up in hell. Right now, let it begin to come out in the name of Jesus. At the sound of my voice, you are a stranger. Break free from their minds. Every mind-blinding spirit, every veil over your mind, Every veil in your head. I command it to be torn. I command it to be torn. I command it to be torn right now. The veil is being lifted up. The same mind that was in Christ is in you. The same mind that was in Christ is in you. In the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray this last prayer point. Pray with fire and power. Say, my soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. As a bird out of the snare of the fowler. As a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. I escape. I escape. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The word of God says in Psalm 124, uh, verse 6. That blessed be the Lord. That has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped. As a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Psalm 124 verse 6 and 7. Hallelujah. I don't know where you've been trapped. But tonight escape. Hallelujah. The snare is broken. In the name of Jesus. Say my soul. My soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. I the snare of the fowler. The, the snare is broken. The is broken. I escaped. I In the name of Jesus. My soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. I saw the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. I escaped. witchcraft coven in the name of Jesus. Escape from the marine coven in the name of Jesus. Escape from the coven of darkness in the name of Jesus. Escape from the idols of your father's house in the name of Jesus. Escape from the trap of the spirit husband in Jesus name. Escape from the trap of the spirit wife in Jesus name. Escape from the coven of darkness in your city. In the name of Jesus. Escape from the cage of poverty. Escape from the strong room of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Escape from the spirit of death and hell. In the name of Jesus. Escape, escape, escape. In the name of Jesus. Escape from the witchcraft of your father's house. In the name of Jesus. Escape from everything holding you. In the name of Jesus. Escape from that satanic embargo. In the name of Jesus. Escape from the spirit of stagnancy and failure. In the name of Jesus. Escape, escape, escape. In the name of Jesus. Escape from marital failure. Escape from the spirit of man and spirit wife. Escape from the marine kingdom. Escape from the strong room of the enemy. Escape in the name of Jesus. In Jesus.
Jesus name we pray. Escape, escape, escape. In the name of Jesus. Say I escape. I escape. I escape. I escape. I escape. I escape. My soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. From the snare of the father. From the trap of the enemy. The snare is broken. The trap is broken. The trap is broken. I escape. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give a clap for Jesus if you have escaped. Clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have escaped in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every power, every spirit, every personality, every foul thing that have come off you today, I send them one way to the pit in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare that there will be no regrouping, no reattaching, no regathering in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every power that wants to fight you because of your deliverance tonight, let the fire of God fall and consume them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I soak you in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your home, your family, and all that concerns you. Amen. In the blood of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I begin to decree right now that the angels of the living God will go home with you. They will continue your deliverance until it is complete. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, tonight, tonight. God will show you the key to your problems. God will show you the root of your problems. God will show you the case that is against you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. I cover every one of you in the blood of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Power of God, fill me afresh. Let the fire of God fill you afresh. Let it fill you afresh right now. Every place where the enemy has departed, let the fire of God fill it. And visit our online deliverance bookstore at www.deliveranceBookstore.com. Hallelujah. Order Dr. Stella Emanuel's books of the Occupying Force series, When Your Levy Breaks. How to pump the junk out. Sustain fire until they are consumed. Jesus helped the church has been gained. Proverbs 31 man. Keys to the effect of spiritual warfare. How to fight and not be a casualty. I trust God as my commander in chief. There's a way out. Carriers of the anointed. Sustain fast. The voice of his word. Three nights with God to put the enemy under siege. 